Okay, hello everybody. We're gonna. I'm not gonna talk too loud, because uh, where are we right now? Is it Bromfels? New Bromfels. Um, I took a ride with Becky and Lou because uh, they work with the lady that fosters out uh, animals, dogs and animals, and so they brought one to a lady in uh, Austin. So I was gonna do the video in Austin, but we were kind of right outside of San Antonio, New Bromfels. Uh, what I want to do, and I won't go too long, we stopped for lunch. Um, the study of 1 Samuel, which I did a few of them with Becky and Lou, and we're going to finish it today. And it's just one chapter, which is chapter 31. But if Becky remembers when we were, uh, I was teaching about King David and how King David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel, but the, the king, the first king, whose name was Saul, he basically, throughout the story of Samuel, in the first Samuel, Saul is pursuing David, trying to kill him, and every, and the, every opportunity that King o David gets to take out the enemy Saul, meaning Saul's after him to kill him, David always passes it up, meaning he'll take like a some clothing from Saul and a water bottle and they snuck into the camp and then uh, David woke up Saul and his men and said look I had the chance to kill you Saul look I have your water bottle here and uh, Saul then says David says I didn't kill you see I'm still you know nice I'm still your friend Saul and that goes on that goes on throughout the book but at the end, I, I'll review real quick. Oh, do you want me to do the one chapter? It's right at the end. What? The chapter where it's called The Witch of Endor. Uh, yeah. Do you know that one? Okay, because no. they we pass up a lot of palm readers and stuff, fortunately. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, well, believe it or not, I already did it, but I'll review it briefly. So as King Saul... So this is in the Bible, believe it or not. And at one point, Saul, right at the end of his story, God stops speaking to Saul. It says God did not communicate to Saul through dreams or through prophets or through something that was like called Urim and Dummim, where it was a certain rite like the priests did when you were going to basically pray to God. Well, at this point in Saul's uh, kingdom reign, God stopped speaking to him. These are the last few chapters I did the last few weeks. So what Saul, what Saul did was this. He told his men, go find a medium, basically like a palm reader, mm -hmm. like what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So in the Bible, Saul said to his own guys, I want a fortune teller or a medium. Well, Saul had previously banned all mediums, sorcerers, witches. He kicked them out of the land uh, under judgment of death if we catch you. But at that stage, Saul was so desperate because God stopped speaking, he said, go get one. I'll go to the palm reader, I'll go to the witch, I'll go to whoever you can. So Saul disguises himself puts on like uh, different clothing and so she won't recognize him and they go find a lady that's got a little this little sorcery thing going on and when they go to her they ask her look we have a customer you know we have somebody she says and it's Saul himself that's kind of pretending he's somebody else and the lady says I can't do this King Saul banned us. If he finds out I'm still, you know, doing my fortune telling, and Saul, she don't know what's in, Saul says, no, don't worry about it. Why did she go? And the lady asks Saul, who do you want me to bring up from the dead? Basically like the movie Ghost with the seance, remember with Whoopi Goldberg? Well, he tells her who to bring up, and Sure enough, and I, I'm not going to teach holding again, Saul wants to hear from Samuel the prophet, who had already died, who this book is named after Samuel. 
sure enough, the lady is seeing what the Bible says, God's come up out of the earth, and she screams. She, so that kind of indicates maybe she wasn't really a medium, meaning doing it. And maybe in this case, it happened for real because God permits this to happen. Different teachers have different views on this. But when Samuel comes up in spirit, he says, why did you disturb me? And he's now talking to Saul. And Saul said to Samuel, or Samuel said to Saul, Saul asks Samuel, the spirit of Samuel is back from the dead. And Saul, the king, asked Samuel, I have a big battle coming up tomorrow against the Philistines. And I'm not sure what's going to happen. And God stopped talking to me. And Samuel basically told him, in the battle tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. You'll be dead. And God had already told you, Saul, that he left you, and David is the next king. Okay. That was the famous, some people uh, titled that chapter, The Witch at Endor, because that was a city that lady was in. That, that is in the Bible. I think it was the last chapter or two right before this. But the last chapter is the battle. Saul finally, and this is the end of the book of Samuel, and then I'll, say, I'll make a few notes at the end. They go to battle against the Philistines. The Philistines kill. The Philistines uh, kill uh, Saul's men. They get his kids, and then they wound King Saul with a bow and arrow. Hit him with an arrow, and Saul does not want to die at the hand of the enemy. Lest he's afraid they might abuse his body, it says, meaning torture him. And he turns to his like bodyguard, armor bearer, and he says, Go ahead and kill me. I don't want the Philistines to finish me off. And the armor bearer, his bodyguard, is afraid, and the bodyguard says, I'm not going to kill you. So Saul falls on his own sword, kills himself. And there's a few suicides in scripture, and the other famous one is Judas. And it's interesting because Judas betrayed Jesus Christ, who was the anointed one. And, at, and his own uh, punishment was at his own hand. Judas hung himself in the New Testament, a very famous suicide. But in this case, Saul also kills himself. And he was also, at that stage, going against God's anointed, which was King David, who is a type and a picture of Jesus Christ. And what happens at the end is, it's kind of sad because that's the end of the reign of King Saul. And at that stage, because of the history of Saul, he was going to have, the, he had the priest killed by this time. He already was away from God. It would be like if you were in a business or in a ministry or whatever, and everybody knew, oh, it's over. That, that business is done, or that church is finished, or whatever. That's at the stage that this happens in the life of King Saul. Everybody realized that it was over, except for Saul. And he went right to the end, and it finished. <coughs> but something interesting happens here in the sad chapter of the end of the death of Saul. The Philistines, who killed him, they chop off his head, they send the head all to all the other Philistines, which is the same thing that King David did when he killed the Philistine champion by the name of Goliath, which is a sign of victory or a sign of like your shame in the enemy. And then they took the body of Saul and they and his armor, and they placed it at one of their pagan temples, which was a god for Ashtaroth. Okay? which is one of the Philistine pagan gods, and they desecrated it. But this is the one interesting point, I guess there's not a whole lot in this last chapter, this is chapter 31. But there were people that lived in a little town called Jabesh Gilead. And it says, when these people heard how Saul's body was hung up on the wall, and his son Jonathan, who died as well, and the other two sons, 
they traveled all the way to the area where the Philistines had Saul, his body. They took it down and they brought it back to their town. And they didn't bury him. It says they burnt him, but they buried his bones because his body was probably already messed up. And it says these people in this little town, they fasted seven days in lamentation over Saul. And why did they do that, the people of Jabesh Gilead? Because earlier on in the history of Saul, he defended those people. He defended them against, I think it was the Ammonites. So they remembered, even though he was hated by so many people at that stage, there was some good things he did that people remembered. You know, Fidel Castro just died. Today, as I speak, uh, the famous astronaut uh, John Glenn died today because I checked the Google all, you know, the news. But a few, uh, about 10 days ago or so, Fidel Castro died. They were the leader of Cuba. A lot of people have different world reaction. In this country, many of the Cubans that live in the, one of my best friends growing up was a Cuban. And he, uh, you know, experienced, came over when he was young from Cuba to Florida. There's a lot of different uh, immigrants do. But they hated Castro, rightfully so, because he was oppressive, he did a lot of bad things. But there were some people that, and I watched the interviews of, of, the, of Castro, some people praised him. And I know that the critics of Castro, because of his history, thought it strange. And even the Pope made a statement like, and even President Obama was not as critical of Castro as others were in this country. But in this case of Saul, it reminded me of that because he was bad at the point of his death. He did a lot of bad things and then he killed innocent people. But he did do some good things before he got that bad. His motivations were not necessarily all wrong from the beginning. And if I did a brief history of just the Cuban Revolution, uh, because Che Rivera, Che, the famous uh, revolutionary, he assisted in the overthrow of a man by the name of Batista, who was the leader of Cuba, backed by the United States. And if you just looked at the Cuban Revolution, what happened when Castro, and along with the assistance of Che, uh, the famous Che Rivera, it was really astounding that they had their revolution. And I'm not saying the communist revolution in Cuba, everything I agreed with, obviously I don't. But there were some people that said yes, that they, they thought he did something that was not wrong. Not a lot of them, but some did. And in the death of Saul here at the end, he did some good things along the road. But that's the completion of the story of Samuel. I don't think I'm gonna do uh, Second Samuel, and I'm not sure what we'll teach next, uh, maybe the book of Galatians. But I now do a real brief overview and we'll be done because we're still sitting in the taco place. Um, the main thing about the book of Samuel was the importance for people that study the Bible is Samuel was the prophet that was born supernaturally because God uh, allowed his mom to have the child, for him to be born. He was dedicated to God from his birth. And God never wanted the people of Israel to have a king, but the people asked and wanted a king. And when God gave them the first king, who was Saul, God permitted that. But Samuel, the prophet, who the book is named after, he reminded them, he said, I'm going to let you have this king. You put all your hopes in this king. and You want to have a human king that you all can pin everything on. And Samuel said, but you rejected God when you did that. You rejected God by putting all your hopes in a human. And, the, and so Samuel's important because he anointed, he was the one who put in place the first king, which was Saul, and he anointed the second king of Israel, which was David. And Israel will have many, the nation will have many more kings. And we live in a time right now, as I make the video, where there's so much on our U.S. elections. And I think we deceive ourselves.
whether you supported Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump or whoever you're going to support at, at, down the road, many elections. Presidents are so limited in what they can do. And we're very divided. And I was almost, before the election, I was thinking maybe it's better if Hillary Clinton wins. Why? Because you're going to have four years of media not even focusing on what's important. I didn't want to do this. The last two weeks, the big news story, major breaking news, was President-elect Donald Trump took a phone call from, uh, Ty uh, I think it was Taiwan, but he took a phone call from th that vi would violate, basically, standing policy of the U.S. that we recognize a one-China policy. All he did was take a phone call. And the media made it look like it was, a, they almost forced stuff that didn't have to be out there. They said, oh, China's going to really respond. China's going to really react to this because China does not recognize them as a separate uh, country. They, and so the U.S. has a policy we don't recognize. But Trump took the phone call from that leader. And they made it look, it was a congratulatory call. They made it look like it was almost the worst, you know, we're going to World War III over it. This is what the media did. But do you know, there were so many other important things. But they played that as a top thing for two weeks. I don't care what your position is, but to me it was just a matter of we're going to go on a long road now for the next four years of everything being blown out of proportion. And in our country, Israel made a mistake because they put a lot of trust, they wanted a king. And in our country, we put a lot of weight on, oh, this one gets in, they're going to turn everything around. Or they're, they're very limited. Our president in this country is very limited in what he or she can do. And I think there's so many other things that are major things, like $20 trillion of debt, which nobody has a plan to get out of that. Okay? And you can't keep going to where you're going, where are going. And there's a lot of manipulation of things in this country. But at the end, we're going to end with that because I don't want to go too long. Um, God, I won't do the story of David, which we would cover in Second Samuel. But, but David is going to become, obviously, recognized as next king. And he's going to bring the people of God back. Or Israel at that time is going to bring them back. He's going to establish a lot of great things. God's going to uh, do great things with King David. Mm. But we don't want to put too much hope in men because when you do that, you reject God. All right? Becky, any questions? Good one. Lou? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think Lulu was a Trump supporter. Nah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Because... All right, that's it. Uh, God bless everybody. This is from New Braunfels.